Michael Weber, Artistic Director of Chicago's Porchlight Music Theater. Opening on Broadway November 8, 1932 at the Alvin Theater, with music by Jerome Kern, book and lyrics by Oscar Hammerstein II, and staged by the authors themselves, Music in the Air featured a huge cast, including actors Walter Slazik, Vivian Vance, Marjorie Maine, and Al Sheen, who was the uncle of the Marx Brothers and half of the comedy team of Gallagher and Sheen. Music in the Air is a period piece that barely belonged in its own time, the era of Broadway following the landmark showboat by these same authors, and it certainly would find no commercial favor today. Yet its lush and melodic score and its exquisite historic and hysterical teetering between the old musical theater conventions of operetta and the new emerging forms of musical comedy made for a special night of theater that was a huge success in 1932. Music in the Air is a story about country people coming to the big city and almost getting corrupted. Of course, they rediscover their values and their love by the end of the play. The simple plot revolves around an innocent young school teacher and his innocent young sweetheart who come to Munich from their small town in Germany with her musician father and fall in with the wicked people of the theater including a hilariously self-absorbed diva and her lover, an equally self-absorbed playwright. It doesn't take an expert to see that great songs like I've Told Every Little Star, I'm Alone, and The Song Is You anchor the musical's appeal over 90 years after its debut. But the show's ultimate success rests on the clash between the show's essentially modern book and its basically old-fashioned but exquisitely beautiful score. And it's not just the score of Music in the Air that breaks ground. The book and lyrics were Hammerstein's most sophisticated to date, and suggest that, contrary to his later and largely undeserved reputation as a purveyor of comforting homilies, he was, in fact, a most worldly writer of musical theater, a man eager to confront the vagaries of desire, the confounding nature of aging, and overpowering urge to regain the potency of youth. Music in the air behaves like a light romantic comedy and sometimes sounds like the operettas it is spoofing, but it leaves the impression of something more profound, a kind of meditation on sex, love, youth, and age, probably not seen again in a Broadway musical until Stephen Sondheim and Hugh Wheeler's A Little Night Music some 40 years on. Here on the October 24th, 1949 episode of the Railroad Hour are stars Jane Powell and Gordon McRae with Betty Lou Gerzen, Jerome Cowan, Herb Butterfield, and Gigi Pearson in Music in the Air. Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. Here comes the star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the great Broadway musical hit, Music in the Air, starring Gordon McRae and his charming young guest star, Miss Jane Powell. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and the music is arranged and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight another top musical success is brought to you by the American Railroads. The same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you very much, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight we have music by Jerome Kern and a story by Oscar Hammerstein II. And so we're ready for adventure, romance, and music in the air. Our curtain rises on the picturesque mountain village of Edendorf, deep in the Bavarian Alps, where I happen to be a schoolteacher named Carl Rader. A mighty lucky schoolteacher, too. 
because my sweetheart is the petite and charming motion picture star, Janie Powell. Why, thank you, Carl. Oh, you're welcome, Sieglinda. Uh, that's Janie's name in the story, Sieglinda. But you see, I'm sort of a bashful schoolmaster. More at home with a multiplication table than with a girl. And every time I see the beautiful Sieglinda, I... I don't know, I get a lump in my throat. So I can't really say the things I feel inside me. I remember one day I was coming up to Siglinda's house to bring something to her father, Dr. Lessing. Hello, Carl. Oh, oh, hello, Siglinda. Well, you should have told me you were coming to see me. I'd have been home sooner. Well, you see, I, I didn't exactly come to see you. Oh? I came to see your father. Well, if you'd rather see my father than see oh, no, me, Siglinda, I... Siglinda, you don't understand. I mean, I always say the wrong thing when I'm close to you. Oh, Carl... Oh, don't be bashful. Tell me what you're trying to say. I hear music when I look at you. A beautiful theme of every dream I ever knew. Down deep in my heart, I hear it play. I feel it start. You? Yes, Father. I've finished the words, Dr. Lessing. So soon. That's wonderful. Carl, did you write words for one of Father's compositions? Well, I hope what I've written is worthy of the greatest composer in Edendorf. Oh, oh Carl, I am the greatest composer in Edendorf because I'm the only composer in Edendorf. Let me hear your lyric, Carl. I'll be out in the kitchen. No, no, Siglin, stay. I want you to hear this, too. Because even though you don't know it, you helped me write the words. Star, just how sweet I think you are. Why haven't I told you? I pulled ripples in a brook, made my heart an open book. Oh, why haven't I told you? Friends ask me, am I in 
and love, I always answer yes. Mine as well confess, if I don't, they guess. Maybe you may know it too. Oh, my darling, if you do, why haven't you told me? Sieglinde, you and Carl sing it together. All right. I make up things to say on my way to you. On my way to you. in the brook made my heart an open book oh why haven't I told you friends ask me am I in love I always answer yes my as well confess if I don't ourselves in our own little valley. She's right, Dr. Lessing. You should have it published. Oh, I am no businessman. Look, I'm going to Munich next week with the walking club. And Dr. Lessing, if you came with us... I should walk to Munich 60 miles? You think I'm a schoolboy? Oh, we'll take our time a week or more. I have not been there for 20 years. My old school friend, Ernst Mahler, is a music publisher in Munich. Why, then you must come and give him the song. And Sigunda must come to sing it for you. Oh, oh, please, Father. Please, huh? Somehow I feel this is a wrong thing to do. It will bring sadness to us. How, Dr. Lessing? It can only make you famous. Oh, it'll be a wonderful holiday for all of us. There's a hill beyond the hill, beyond the hill, beyond the hill. It's a little beyond the song. Follow along, follow along. There's a hill beyond the hill, beyond the hill. Goodness, what have they done for Munich in the 20 years I've been away? Oh, goodness, everyone's in such a hurry, and look, everyone looks so mad. Well, that's the way it is with city life. Ah, look, there is the sign, Marla and Company, music publishers. Well, shall we go in? I wonder if my old friend Ernst will recognize me. It has been so long. May I help you? Oh, uh, We'd like to see Mr. Mahler, please. Well, he's very busy. You'll have to wait. And you can take your play and your music. Now, Frida, let's not have another scene. Who's making a scene? Oh, my goodness. I'm leaving you, Mr. Mahler. I'm leaving your wretched little opera company. May I introduce oh. myself? Walk out on me, Frida Hotsfield, and you'll never work in musical comedy again. Uh, I have a dozen offers. 
Excuse me. Are you... Are you really Frida Hartsfeld? The great star? Ah. Uh, uh, <laughs> see, Mr. Marley, here is a young man who appreciates my uh, talent. Huh. I, I saw you once in the chocolate soldier. You were wonderful. Uh, how sweet of you to say so. <laughs> it is not possible. You are Mr. Marley? Yes. You look like Ernst, but you should be older. We went to school together. Oh, oh, uh, you're thinking of my father. He's been dead ten years. Ernst is dead. Yes, my old friend. Oh, don't be sad, Father. I'm sure young Mr. Marley will listen to your composition. Uh, you see, I have written a song, and uh, my daughter has come to sing it for you. Everyone in the world has written a song and expects me to publish it. I'm sorry, I can't be bothered. You can't treat my father like this. He's a great composer. <laughs> well, this is a fiery little one, isn't she? Bruno Mahler. Oh, run along. I'm going to listen to this little angel sing. That finishes it. I'm through. That's right. You're through. Oh! Oh! Young man. Yes? Uh, how would you like to take me to dinner? Me? Have dinner with, with the immortal Frida Hotspell? Oh, what a nice way of putting it. Young man, you should write. Well, I I have done a few lyrics. Oh? Well, perhaps you'll write something for me. Come, we'll discuss it at dinner. Carl! Uh, now, Mr. Marler, about the song. Oh, yes, yes, the song. Uh, yes, I'll listen to it. And then, Dr. Lessing, perhaps you'll let me have dinner uh, with your daughter. Are you having a good time, Carl? Yes. But I can't believe that this is really me having dinner with a famous star. <laughs> oh, Carl, you're refreshing. And I'm very fond of you. Are you really? Do you know what's been happening to me, Frida, while we walked in the park? No. Tell me, Carl. I hear music when I look at you. A beautiful theme of every dream I ever knew. Down deep in my heart, I hear it play. I feel it start. Having a good time, Siglinda? Oh, it's been a glorious evening. And I'm so proud that you're going to publish my father's song. <laughs> How could I help it after uh, the way you sang it? <laughs> I wonder, can I persuade you to take Frida Hartsfield's place in my opera company? I'll make the theater goers love you as much as I do. You think you could be happy working with me? Oh, yes, Mr. Marley. Why, as we were together, I, I almost seem to hear music in the air. I all this is working out all wrong. I always thought that Carl and my Siglinda, that they should sing their songs to each other, not to strangers. Oh, we never should have come here. We should have stayed in Edendorf. Why can't I let you know the song my heart would sing? That beautiful rhapsody of love and youth and the spring. The music is sweet. We'll return to the second act of Music in the Air in a moment. But first, safety is the product of many things. It is the product of safe tools and equipment. It is the product of the observance of safe operating rules, whether it be the operation of a kitchen stove at home or an automobile on the road or a train on its track. 
Most important of all, perhaps, safety is the product of education in safe thinking and habits. For the greatest of all safety devices is a safe man. Nearly 40 years ago, the railroads undertook organized cooperative efforts toward the creation of safe habits of thought and action. Other industries and organizations did likewise. The National Safety Council, which this week is holding its 37th annual meeting, was formed as a central agency to work in the whole field. At the same time, industries carry on their own special programs of safety. On the railroads, this work is done both by the individual railroads and by the safety section of the Association of American Railroads. The result is a degree of safety on the railroads undreamed of when the program started. In 1948, fatalities to passengers in proportion to miles traveled were only one-tenth as many as in 1913, and the rate of injuries was only one-fifth what it was then. The number of casualties to employees was only one-tenth as great in proportion to the traffic moved in 1948 as it was 35 years earlier. Such a record, unequaled elsewhere in the transportation world, has been accomplished by years of organized and purposeful attention to safety. But safety is not something that can be achieved and then forgotten. So railroads and railroad men are keeping on with their work for safety, through engineering, through enforcement, through education, in safe thinking and safe practice, all to the end that we shall have in the future railroad transportation even safer than it is today. Hi, this is Porchlight Music Theater's marketing associate, Lobo Tate. If you value programming like this, please consider making a donation today at porchlightmusictheater.org. We appreciate your consideration, and we hope you enjoy the show. Now here is Act Two of Music in the Air, starring Gordon McRae as Carl Rader, and his guest star Jane Powell as Sieglinda. It's strange how people who love each other or think they do can suddenly drift apart. Back home in Edendorf, I had dreamed that someday Sieglinda would be mine. But in Munich, with the glamorous Frieda Hotzkull in my arms, Sieglinda didn't seem nearly so important. And she was having the time of her life with that pompous impresario, Bruno Mahler, who had actually given her a starring part in his newest operetta. Quiet now, quiet in the theater. Oh, oh do I look all right, Mr. Mahler? Oh, yes, my child, you look enchanting. Oh, gosh. I'm so frightened, though, with, with all the lights and, and the people. Do not be frightened. This is merely a dress rehearsal. See it, pretty, my dear. I will be busy. Well, thank you, Father. All right, music. A warm spring night was stirred by a breeze and love was born. A moon in flight was caught in the trees and love was born. A lark sang out and through the mist a sigh became a sigh. that beautifully, Mr. Marla. Yes, yes, she sings magnificently. But I'm afraid she won't do. What do you mean, sir? Well, it's, uh, it's not enough to be able to sing. A star in musical comedy must, must know how to move, how to act, how to walk up on the stage as if she owned it. But Siglinda is a child. She will learn. There isn't time enough. Oh, if I could only get Frida Hotzfeld. I thought you hated her. I do. I would give my arm not to be dependent upon her. But do you realize what makes her great? She's played every little town in Europe. She's been hissed and booed off stages. 
She starved between jobs. But finally, after years of work, she's become Frida Hutzfeld, the famous prima donna. And so, my dear, it was wrong of me to expect you to take her place, a child who never saw a stage until a few weeks ago. I'm so ashamed. Hey, Glenda. Oh, see, Glenda, what's wrong? Carl. Oh, oh, you tell him, Father. Schoolmaster, have you seen Frida Hotzfeld? You know where she is? Why, yes. Good. At her hotel, she's packing her bag to go to Vienna. Oh, I only hope I'm in time to stop her. I don't understand. What's going on here? They don't want me to play the part. Oh, dear, oh. dear child. They said I'm not good enough. I'm sorry, Siglinda. But we don't belong here. We belong in our own little village in Edendorf. <laughs> now that you're tired of your Frida Hotzfeld, I suppose you want to go home, hmm? Yes, Siglinda. Well, I, I, I don't know what to do. I... Oh, come, Father, please. Please, I, I want to get away from you. But Siglinda. Siglinda. We belong together. We're happy together. And life is a song. When we are together, we know we are where we belong. We belong together like birds of a feather. Together we fly. Little caring whether the rest of the world is alive. All alone, I am only a half like a joke without any love. But when we are together, When we are together, we know we are where we belong. On the long, lonesome road back to Edendorf, I thought how much I hated all great cities and all prima donnas of musical comedy. Because they had separated me from my Sieglinde. In Niedendorf, I found her again, but we were farther apart than ever. Until the day Sieglinde came running to her father with a big package wrapped in brown paper. Father, Father, look what came in the post. Oh, Munich. What, what can it be? Oh, your song. All printed and published. Oh. And a letter from Mr. Marla. Oh, we oh. are sending this all over the world. Oh. We expect to sell thousands of copies. Oh, Father. Oh, congratulations. You must not only congratulate me, my child. What about the man who wrote the words to the song? I don't want to talk to Carl. He doesn't care anything about me. Nonsense. The whole village is talking about how sad our schoolmaster is because you won't talk to him. He is so gloomy with his lessons... A whole generation is being depressed. Well, we can't let that happen. Of course not. Now, now take this music and show it to your car. <laughs> Oh, it's your song, Carl. Oh, no, my darling. You were the inspiration both for your father and for me. Sieglinde, the song is you. I alone have heard this lovely strain. Side of me, why can't I let it go? Why can't I let you know? Why can't I let you know the song my heart would sing? That beautiful rhapsody of love and youth and the spring.
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. James Powell will be back in just a moment. Meanwhile, this is Gordon Macrae with a word of thanks to our excellent supporting cast, Betty Lou Gerson, Jerome Cowan, Gigi Pearson, and Herb Butterfield, who played Dr. Lessing. Music in the Air, composed by Jerome Kern, with book and lyrics by Oscar Hammerstein II, was adapted for radio by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this time by the American Railroads. These railroads are your hometown partners. They provide jobs for your neighbors. They buy supplies in your town. And they pay local taxes just as you and I. Thus, the railroads are more than just railroads. They are citizens, and mighty important citizens, in your own hometown. Now here again is lovely Jane Powell. Oh, thanks, Gordon. Gee, it was fun making music in the air and the music on the air. <laughs> well, it's always fun to peek around a microphone and see you standing there, Janie. But when you peek about a month from now, Gordon, you'll see me again. That's right. We'll be back in old Heidelberg together for the student prints. I've already got my passport. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, don't miss next week's Railroad Hour, Janie. We'll have Kenny Baker and Lucille Norman in one of America's favorite operettas, Blossom Time. You know what? I'll have my head right inside that radio. <laughs> All aboard! Well, good night, Janie. It looks as though we're ready to pull out. And so until next week, goodbye. Music in the Air was presented by Special Arrangement with Tam's Whitmark Music Library. Gordon McRae is now being seen in the Warner Brothers Technicolor production, Look for the Silver Lining. Jane Powell appeared by arrangement with metro goldwyn Mayer, producers of The Red Danube, starring Walter Pidgeon, Ethel Barrymore, and Peter Lawson. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is arranged and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the Association of American Railroads. And now, keep tuned to your Monday night of music on NBC. In 1934, Fox Films made a motion picture version of Music in the Air, starring Gloria Swanson, John Bowles, and Reginald Owen, with Al Sheehan and Marjorie Maine repeating their original stage roles in the film. Inexplicably, the show's best-known musical number, The Song Is You, was recorded and filmed but cut out of the final release version. As filmed, John Bowles sang it to actor June Lang in a dressing room scene. An instrumental of the song can still be heard under the opening credits. A 1951 Broadway revival of Music in the Air ran at the Ziegfeld Theatre. Again directed by Oscar Hammerstein II, the cast featured Jane Pickens, Dennis King, and Charles Winninger. Because of possible anti-German feeling after World War II, Hammerstein changed the setting from Munich to Zurich to appease audience tastes. Theaters across the country need your support now, more than ever. We hope you'll consider a donation to Porchlight Music Theater today. Just go to porchlightmusictheater.org. Until next time on Classic Musicals from the Golden Age of Radio, I'm Michael Weber. Michael Weber